You guys are always asking in the comments how I find the trails we run, and one of the best ways you can do that is by exploring the Onyx off-road map. It's kind of like Google Earth, except with all the trails around you mapped out by people who've actually run them. Just clicking on the Discover tab lets you get a quick view of what's around you to go explore, making it super easy. It even tells you what type of land you're on, so you know if it's public or private, for example. Use my special link in the description to sign up right now and save 20% on your subscription. Metal Cloak makes some of the best fenders available for Jeep Wranglers and Jeep Gladiators. Wow! The aluminum Metal Cloak Overland fenders offer 1.5 inch tubing with 1 8 aluminum surfaces. These fenders are extremely strong and very lightweight which is why Sean chose them. They're built tough and include plug and play LED daytime running lights and turn signals. They offer more clearance than the stock Rubicon fenders, which Sean needs to fit his 40 inch tires. So while he's editing his next adventure for you, we're going to install the Metal Cloak Overland fenders. And even though these are the Rubicon fenders, we're gonna throw on the Metal Cloak lightweight Overland fenders because it gives more clearance for Sean's 40 inch tires which he's going to be putting on this rig. As well, we're going to be throwing in the Metal Cloak inner fenders to complete the whole package. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the fenders. We're gonna go all the way around, we're gonna take off the inner fenders and the fenders themselves. We're gonna start by popping off all of these little rivets, these plastic rivets. And here's what I found works best. I'm using a T9 and I'm pushing the pin in the middle all the way through. Once you've done that, you can use your removal tool and it'll come right out. That way you're not gonna be breaking anything as you're pulling these out. Next, we'll remove the Christmas tree plugs located here, here, and here. Next up, you'll have these three eight millimeter screws. Nice long extension on your drill. Let's get those ones out. Once you've taken out those three bolts, you just come right out. Perfect. Now what that's going to do is it's going to expose the clips that are holding in the fender. So we're going to get into them from the back side. I'll show you a close up of what that looks like. And we'll pop them out. So this is facing the front of the vehicle and these ones we won't be able to get at from the back side. But all these ones we will be able to get at. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to take your pliers, you're going to reach around the back side, you're going to pinch. I'm going to need two hands for this, but you're going to pinch and you're going to pull this side out. Okay, so by starting on the back side, you can get those bottom two by reaching underneath. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna use these like 45 degree angle pliers. You can get in behind there, pinch and pull the fender, and this will come off. I did break one of them, which is okay. If you plan on reusing the fenders, try to keep these clips because they're kind of hard to come by and you're gonna want them for reinstallation. If you don't plan on keeping the fenders, you could just rip it off. You have to be a little bit careful, they are strong and uh, they could bend your bed, so be careful with that. I did not save the clip. <laughs> Alright, so you're just going to repeat the process to get the inner fender and the outer fender off on the other side. Let's move on to the front.
All right, now depending on your Gladiator, you may have some eight millimeter bolts and some 10 millimeter bolts. It looks like the Rubicons only have, uh, looks like one and two. So there is three 10 millimeter bolts. I couldn't see it because Sean's managed to get dirt all up in here. <laughs> so we're gonna take those off and then we'll go ahead and remove the rivets just the same way we did for the rear fenders. It looks like we got two more 10 millimeter bolts. One of them is right here, and the other one right here. Here and here. Let's take them out. I was hoping I could get it without an extension. You're gonna need an extension for this one. Follow the wire to this clip and unclip it. Again, we're gonna have those white clips that are up here. Now there is one more back there that I can't reach, so we're just gonna pull it out. Got it. All right, once we've removed the inner fender and the fender on the front side, we're just gonna repeat that on the other side. All right, we got all the fenders off. Now we can get going with the installation. I'm going to start with the rear of the vehicle. The instructions say to start with the passenger side, we're gonna remove some things and, and get going. All right, using your pry bar tool, you're gonna to remove this wiring harness. Then we're gonna remove this bracket right here using the 13 millimeter socket. Reinstall the wiring harness and attach the bracket with your stock bolts. All right, we're gonna repeat on the rear side, where we've got two wiring harnesses. Next up are the two bolts holding in the fuel vent. Those will be removed to replace the stock hose with the longer hose and the bracket metal cloak provides. All right, next up we have to drill out these holes they map it all out on the instructions. I'm just gonna use a step up bit and we're gonna make these holes 7 sixteenths. All right, let's do it. Next up, we're gonna remove these clips here. And then we just replace them with the new clips that they provide. Next up, we've got these nifty things that Metal Cloak provides, and we're just gonna mount them to the outside of the inner fender. I'm actually gonna do both inner fenders to save me time for when I go to the other side. So let's get all these installed right now. All right, once you place the inner fender in here, you're gonna do these three 
bolts first with the uh, spacer that they provide. So I've got those in, I've tightened them up, and now this I've left loose, we're gonna put the fender on and then we're gonna bolt it all together. Two bolts on the front side and two bolts on the back side that you can put in and not have to worry about lining it up. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, this is why you guys watch these install videos. I'm about to save you a bunch of time. So we just quickly jump to the fender is on, the inner fender is on. I kept on running into trouble. The clips kept falling out. And if one of them falls out, you have to start all over. You have to pull everything back out. Also to get everything to line up was a big pain in the butt. So here's what I recommend. I drilled all the holes out a little bit bigger, every single one. The clips all lined up better, so I didn't have to finagle them as much. Put the two bolts on the bottom end, on each side, and then everything else should line up. You'll have to maneuver the inner fender a little bit, but you'll get it in there. As for these three bolts, do those last. They're real easy. You just kind of shove them in underneath, and uh, that part was actually pretty easy. All right, let's go do it on the other side, and uh, I'll show you more. And so these are the holes I'm talking about right on the fender. We're just gonna drill them out one size bigger. That way everything will line up a bit better. And so you know, I did check to make sure if it lined up or not before I just drilled those holes. Most of them were bang on. Some of them were off quite a bit. So by making it bigger, I'll be able to move it around a little bit and get them to fit. We'll take off these three clips again. We'll get the new clips in. Make sure these are nice and centered. That's gonna save you a lot of trouble when you start mounting that inner fender. So I've placed the inner fender in there. I'm gonna start with the very, very back one which does not connect to the inner fender. And all I'm doing right now is hand tightening a bolt, a washer, and a nut. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is fiddle with it a little bit. And in this case, the bottom on this side kept on popping out, whereas on the other side it didn't. So I put one of those bolts in the bottom to kind of hold the bottom here. And now I should be able to go through, put all the top pieces in, and then I'll finish up the bottom. All right, once you've got it all lined up, we're just gonna go through and button them all up. Remember, hand tighten them at first, and then button them up. Install and tighten the countersink bolts and move on to the installation of the front. So we're gonna use our step up drill bit. We're gonna come in from the inside and notch out these two holes and install these, which are included in the kit. All right, next up we gotta drill out these holes, same thing, 7 sixteenths. Then we'll install this bracket here, starting with the bottom bolt, swivel it up, add the top bolt. And then the top connects with the bolt that they provide, and this, whoops, top connects with this bolt that they provide, little one, and this thing. All right, next up, installing this bracket. I had trouble locating where to install it. But basically, you just find this bolt here, and it's the very first hole right below it. Pull the button this guy up. All right, next up, we're gonna be drilling out some holes here. So, we're gonna slide this in, see where exactly it goes, so we can drill out these holes 3 8 this hole here, this hole here, this one here, and this one here. If you have a Sharpie, use it. 
Sean's truck is nice and dirty, so I could just rub off some of the dirt. Tighten the four bolts up top so that you can line up the holes on the bottom. And then you're going to mark the three holes on the bottom. Remove the bracket, drill a pilot hole, and install the rib nuts included in the kit. Get it nice and flush and start tightening it. All right, once you got it done, you're gonna hold your wrench nice and tight and with your socket, you can start to undo it. And that's that. All right, once your brackets are installed, we're gonna go through them all. All these bolts are gonna have to come back out to mount the fender. All right, so I plugged in the wiring. I'm actually gonna install the fender first. That way I can tuck the wiring in nice and then we'll install the inner fender. Alright, for this part you're gonna slide the grommet down, put the light through, put the grommet through, okay, install the grommet first and then pull the light back through. Actually don't pull the wire, push this in. There you go. Remember to zap strap the wire to keep them out of the way. And install the inner fender with the four hex bolts provided. Then repeat the whole process on the other side. Once installed, you'll realize that these fenders are very strong. Strong enough to withstand chin-ups. Things like push-ups. Dukes of Hazard style slides. Yeah. Drop kicks. Ooh -ah. Ooh -ah. Karate chops. And so guys, as you can see, those metal cloak fenders can withstand pretty much anything. They're super strong, they're lightweight. Sean's gonna be able to fit his 40s. He's got more clearance than his Rubicon fenders. And they're definitely held on a heck of a lot better than these flimsy things. So make sure you subscribe if you wanna see Sean testing these out in his adventures. Make sure you pick up your merch available at dirtyanddangerous.com. Pick something up for yourself or as a gift for someone else. And thank you for watching the install.